Hey, everybody. Hope everybody's well and having a wonderful Sunday evening. I'm so sorry about the delay. We had just a tinge of technical issues, which I almost never, ever, ever have. Uh, so hopefully that means that this conversation is going to be extra, extra amazing. Um, I hope everybody's enjoying their Sunday night. Um, did you watch Sunday Best? Wasn't it completely amazing? Um, so I hope everybody had a great time watching that again. We apologize for the delay. Technical I issues, a little bit out of our control. So if you look, see me looking down, it's only because I want to make sure that everybody's able to see and log in. Please share, share, share. Uh, so good evening. Welcome. Happy Sunday night. Welcome to Let's Talk with Creatives. Uh, let's talk a late night conversation for creatives. And so I'm just going to make sure that everybody can see the live. I see you on, um, I see a couple people coming in. So what I um, would love for everyone to do is please share it um, so we can make sure that everybody is a part of it. Let's make sure we share it. And then um, in a moment, we'll be bringing in our guests. So I want to talk about just a couple short things before I bring in our guests. Again, I hope you watch Sunday Best tonight. Um, I felt like it was completely amazing. Um, just, just amazing. I thought Stephanie Summers killed the room. I thought she did such a great, great job. Uh, so that's who I'm uh, voting for or rooting for. Um, Ashlyn, as most people know, Ashlyn um, moved on. Uh, she was eliminated last week. And so that only gives me one person to root for. So I think, number one, I think everyone that is a part right now is doing a great, great job. I think they are wonderful. I, I really believe that uh, they are jumping in and they are doing their best. And it's not easy to sing a song. Um, thank you, Lamar. It's not easy to sing a song that you've never heard of before and be able to present it, um, whether it's to just a small amount of people, or whether it's on national television and thousands of people at one time, that's not an easy task. So I, I say, regardless of how or how it did not go, um, how good it was, how good it wasn't, I really do believe that in spite of all of that, they did their absolute best, because that's not easy. It takes a song to, it takes a while to live with the song. Um, I, I feel like the longer you live with the song, the better you do at it. So there are songs that I love, like a Be Grateful, um, which is one of my favorite songs in the whole world. It was written in 1978 by Mr. The Great, late and great Walter Hawkins. And so it's a phenomenal song. And, um, you know, you have to be confident in the song and you have to be able to deliver the song, uh, you know, in a manner that it, you know, that it reaches um, just beyond vocal ability. So that's not me, you know, saying how she did or didn't do. I'm just saying I personally have been living with the song for a very long time. And so, you know, it takes a while. So that being said, I really, really hope um, that you guys, you know, just kind of get the wave of that, understand that. Um, second of all, I wanted to give a shout out to Mark Marquise Collins. Um, Marcus Collins, actually Marcus Collins, he has a really amazing deal. So every Monday, it's called Marketing Monday. Every Monday, he allows um, people to promote anything, your book, your ministry, your real estate company, whatever it is for $2. <laughs> yep, that's it. It costs one, two, $2. So um, what I would love for you to do is if you're interested in doing that, what I would love for you to do is send me an inbox tonight. Um, just say, hey, Yolanda, I, I heard what you're talking about, the guy, uh, marketing $2. You may not remember every single part of it, but what it's called, it's called Marketing Mondays. And what, again, what he does is he gives people the opportunity to promote whatever it is you're doing on Mondays for just one, two, two dollars. The Big Mac costs more than $2. So I really, really think that it's really um, important that you guys take advantage of that, that because I really, really think it's something really, really cool that he does. So that's um, one. 
So Sunday Best is one. Make sure you go vote. I believe it is BET.com forward slash Sunday Best Vote. Uh, it's BET.com forward slash Sunday Best Vote. So there are no spaces or dashes in between. It's just BET, BET.com forward slash the dot com, C O M forward slash Sunday Best Vote. Please, please, please. You may not vote for my, <laughs> for my girl, but you know, whoever it is you choose, but 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 the whole gist is to make sure you vote. So please, please vote. It's really, really and super, 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 super important. Okay, so let's make sure you're all buckled up. What I would love for everybody to do again right now is please share. Um, please share on your Facebook. Please tag somebody. Let somebody know, oh my God, she worked out technical issues and she's on and she's here. And we're going to um, bring our guest in shortly. So I have uh, a really great friend by the name of Cedric Shannon Rees. He and I have been friends or connected for like 20 plus years. Uh, he is part of the reason um, that some of the things I've done in life have actually opened up. He's just a phenomenal. I'm reaching for something. Uh -huh. He's just a phenomenal gifted man. Um, he's written. He's, he's going to tell you all about himself. OK, so I'm going to bring him in. So make sure we can hear him and all things are well. And we're going to get this party moving. But please make sure that you share, 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 okay? All right, here we go. Make sure you're sharing with people. Hope you had a great Sunday. All right, let's go. All right, add him in. Cedric? Hey. Okay. I'm going to move my hair out the way so it's not sticky. Okay. Can you hear? Yes, I can hear you. Can Yay! You hear me? <laughs> yes, I can hear you. Yay! No problem. <laughs> I, just want to, I just want to pause because immediately when he calls me, I don't even see how you do it. <laughs> yes, you do. Crazy. Oh! Something is wrong with you for that. Oh! <laughs> I've been around him a long time. So when he calls me, I just have a feeling. And what we about to talk about okay. is going to be interesting. <laughs> so we're going to try to behave publicly. Definitely. <laughs> I'm on my best behavior. I've been threatened <laughs> by somebody I'll tell you about later. <laughs> this is why we're laughing because, you know, we just have good times. But I'm, I'm so honored to have you on um, from a distance. Mm. Uh, you no know, brother from another mother. He's actually right in the same town, not even the same town, like most times just down the street from my cousins and aunties and uncles. He's right there from St. Louis. Hi, Cedric. Hey. I mean, you see your face. It's like February. I know. I'm actually sitting in my office where, you know, when you're here, you're normally working in yourself. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> normally working myself. <laughs> normally working myself. So, how are you? I'm doing great. Doing great. You know, we had awesome services today. We did, I did uh, three services earlier and uh, they were all, you know, power packed and uh, just what I needed. And, um, you know, I'm just really encouraged and, um, you know, just optimistic, you know, just keeping a positive attitude and preparing myself for what's next. Wow. Tell us, I know this wasn't on what I originally sent you, but tell us, um, so this is Cedric Shannon Reeves, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so tell us about your church because you're in a little, I'm going to jump on this and I'm going to jump into this. Stuff, but tell us you're in a different wave right now. Um, and so tell us where you are, like where you're worshiping, like what's going on with that. Uh, well, I'm at Influence Church in St. Louis, Missouri. It's a multicultural church, one church in four locations. And um, I lead worship at pretty much three uh, of the locations weekly. And, um, you know, it's just been a challenge and a stretch for me. I've been there five years now. Time has wow. just flown by, but um, I've grown a lot there and um, I've learned how to be effective in another culture, uh, not the way I grew up, you know, uh, necessarily. But um, it's been over overall, you know, I thank God for the experience, you know, and um, I'm just pretty much just want to be obedient and do what he tell me to do. 
until he tells me to do something else. Praise the Lord. Wow. So this is totally outside of, because you grew up, what, particular? Baptist. Grew up Baptist. Good, you would never know that about what he sings. But you grew up <laughs> Baptist. Yes. Baptist all day long and all night long. And Wow. Yep. And then I went from Baptist to non-denominational. And then um, I stayed there all the way up until the time that I'm here at the multicultural, um, you know, I don't know really what call it. Call it. I guess it's still non-denominational uh, as well. If I, if it, you know, I don't know, but I've been there, just you know, just planted. And um, each step, I've grown and learned a lot, you know. And so uh, this uh, CCM music is definitely, um, you know, has its. Uh, challenges but you know i've risen to the occasion and i believe i've gotten what i'm supposed to get um out of god putting me in this particular uh place in this season of my life so i'm sure you're going to touch on that because uh we talked about privately uh i can't say one part because the saints not going to like me no more but we talked about privately <laughs> how you believe how this has expanded you though as a as an individual as a singer, as a minister, because you wear a lot of different hats out, outside of being a recording artist. Um, so, you know, we can, we're gonna kind of just flow, but I am sure that this has expanded you and just really just as a person, um, because Definitely. when you go back to, co back to, this, or back to Costo, I think it's more a little back to Costo, <laughs> you're gonna go back to Costo, and then, you know, you segue into all these different arenas that would have to this experience where it's a little bit more, Mm, straight edge, I would assume sometimes it, it would have to expand you because you can't just be, you know, just just a little bit, just everywhere. So, so, sometimes in, in our church churches, mm. we don't kind of stick to a, a, a format all the time. That's not that's not always bad. But sometimes in more multicultural churches, um, they are a little bit more straight edge. Definitely. You're right. You're exactly right. Yeah, I can't say it any better myself. <laughs> yes, it takes getting used to. It's not for everybody. <laughs> oh Lord, it's not for the faint of heart. Okay, okay. So I, I want to make sure I give you time to talk to Flo. So, um, tell us a little bit about you. How did you come into the music, to the ministry and music industry? Um. Well, actually, um, I've been doing this pretty much my whole life. Um, I just, I got into the industry, I would say probably by accident. Um, I never uh, pursued it. I've seen more success pretty much as a songwriter um, than I have, have as anything else at this particular juncture. Um, but even with the songwriting, it was kind of like a word of mouth thing that kind of took off and then one door opened up another door. And um, to make a long story short in that, I pretty much written for um, a lot of gospel artists like, uh, oh, let's see, Leandra Johnson, Amber Bullock, Darwin Hobbs, Dwayne Woods, the Anointed Pace Sisters, Bishop T.D. Jakes, Potter's House Mass Choir, Bishop Paul wow. Martin, San Franklin, wow. Crystal Rucker. <laughs> I mean, I have a lot of songs out there. Um, so, and some more awesomeness coming up really soon. Um, wow. Hopefully we'll get to share with them a little later. <laughs> wow yeah so the the list of artists that you've written for is, is actually pretty lengthy um Definitely. you mentioned you mentioned uh sam franklin pastor sam franklin shout out to her um in kingdom yeah. of social center so you've written for you know pastor sam you've written for paul morton um yeah. amber bullock uh leandria which people didn't know the song this is because we've been connected so long but the mm -hmm. song you wrote for leandria you already had if i don't know if i can say that much Mm -hmm. yeah. that you already like had in your in your in your library in your catalog and she liked the song right Definitely. and then she wanted to sing the song which which says a lot about uh the type of, of writer or composer that you are how was that experience for you um you know it's always humbling um 
like when I started getting placements, uh, my friend Darwin Hobbs was actually playing a lot of my unreleased music. And um, he was riding in the car one day with Latrice play, Pace playing my music. And she fell in love with like two or three of the songs. Their, their last two albums on, on Top Sky Records, the most recent ones, the singles that they released are my songs. And um, he just like called me with her in the car one day and she was going crazy. Like, oh my God, let us record these songs. And like, you know what I'm saying? The same thing with Leandra, you know, she was with Amber and, you know, nothing like listen to this and you know can i have this song and you know like a lot of a lot of the songs i have placed have pretty much been just like that i don't i've never really actually submitted a song to an artist mostly oh. like, like probably the 10 or 12 of the placements that i do have they pretty much called and asked me for the song so it's really been a wow. blessing in that area wow that must be a lot so so uh just with that little bit right there how how has it been for you that, that leads to my next thing. So how has the writing experience been for you? Uh, people want you to write for different reasons and, and, and seasons, and uh, I'm sure it wasn't an overnight success. Uh, Kirk Carr often talks about when he wrote, uh, when he wrote For Every Mountain, he didn't like it, and how it just sat mm. and sat and sat. Wow. And who was everything <laughs> And now he wrote it like when he had almost nothing. He was wrote it like, on some type of cardboard box or something. It was just, who would ever think that song, which is being literally sang all over the world in multiple different countries and languages. So what has the writing experience been like for you? Um, well, you know, my writing experience is really probably the same as a lot of people, but also different. Uh, most of the time, every time I come out of prayer, uh, personal prayer time, I get a melody. It may not be a whole song. I may just get a piece. And then later on, I'll go back and visit, revisit that piece that bless me and I'll add something to it or I'll go ahead and spend time and develop it. But most of the time, I either write most of my songs either out of out of my prayer time or in the middle of live concerts. Like I'm singing a song that I already have and then I'll be flowing into something else and then I'll go into something and I just like, you know, like, you know, just make up songs like, you know, they just come. You like they just flow like that. You know, very rarely do I just sit down and say, I want to write, at least for myself anyway. Now, if I'm writing for somebody else, I can see it. They can tell me a story and say, this is what I'm going through. or This is my testimony. This is what I've been through. And I can write like on the spot their story but for myself most of the songs that i've recorded have come by way of prayer or either out of a flow in a live setting wow wow so you you say you you're not the type of composer you you write in the in the in the in the room you write in the atmosphere you write as things are moving and things are developing and wow so yeah, no. so most yeah. people put myself on the spot most people like I, who don't see themselves as a writer, totally struggle with the process. You know, so I hear songs in parts or I hear the whole, which I've never said this publicly, but I hear the whole song, meaning I hear band, singers, I mm -hmm. see stage, I see lights. When I hear it, I almost see it. Uh, how do you believe that writers who are in the early stages, you know, I'm sure everybody's development process is different, but how do you feel like they should approach songs? Maybe if it's that type, type of circumstance where, you know, personally, I, mean, I don't play. So how do I put to life, you know, what I'm hearing? Yeah, I mean, there's, there, I think there's so many ways. I think that it really is based on an individual's personality and how they, uh, you know, communicate. Um, but if you don't play, like I don't play necessarily, you know, like um, fluently to, you know, sit down and play a song or something. But, you know, sometimes I'll just call some of my friends over that I know sing. And if I hear the melody, I'll be like, hey, sing this, sing this part, sing this part, let me record it, you know, and just get it on, you know, line. If you're hearing the melody and the music, because all, all music is is melody. So even if you can't play, if you can sing the melody, then you're writing the music. Music. Oh, that's good. So, can, you, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, just it's just uh, you know self-explanatory. Like you know, if you are singing and you actually have the melody that goes with the lyric, you know, a melody lyrics without melody is poetry. It's just um, you know, but when you are actually singing and say this is how it goes, you can sit with a keyboard player and, and you actually sing the the melody of the song and they play what you're singing, then you technically wrote that music even though you don't play. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. So let, let me touch on this before we get like too far off. Uh, 
so how do you protect your music in, in um, short form? When um, you write it, how do you how do you protect that metal? So let's say you you you're hearing a song, you're in the church service and you or you're wherever and you hear this song and you're singing the song and this yeah. song has never been heard before. How do you protect it at that moment? Well, at that moment, I can't, you know, um, I just have to, you know, as soon as that moment is over, if it's something that I'm going to develop, you know, and I feel like that song was for more than just that moment. Cause sometimes every song that I make in the moment is not for a record. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's just for that, that setting or for somebody in that setting. Um, but if I feel like there's something that other people need to hear, then I'll take it home and I'll develop it. And, you know, I have a publishing company uh, with BMI or whatever. So I'll do whatever I have to do, you know, with that. And then I copyright the songs through the Library of Congress and I do them, you know, all kind of ways that they're, they're changing and growing a lot, but it's pretty much the same process. And um, if I know that I'm going to do something with the song, I just make sure that I'm covered, uh, cover myself as soon as possible. If I know I sang it, you know, out already technically um, to make sure that I get it done okay. if I want to do something with it. Okay. So I want to touch on one thing. I'll move to my next question. Something you shared with me, I feel like I can share publicly is uh, Yolanda, when you get it, don't wait. Uh, I remember you said to me, if you wake up with it, because I was like, I wake up with music in my head every day. I remember mm. you saying, grab your phone, write it down. Don't think you're going to remember it later because you won't. Definitely. Yes, I'm, I'm, I've lost a lot of songs being lazy and not wanting to get up and write it down. You know, uh, if you hear a melody while you're sleeping, you know, sometimes I have to call some of my friends and be like, is this a song? Is this somebody's song I'm singing or is it mine? You know, because <laughs> I'm really singing it real fluently. Like I heard it before, you know, uh, you know, but definitely you should do it in that moment, you know what I'm saying? When you're really in that place, you know, you have to keep something close to you, you know, but phones have made it so, technology has made it so easy About to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's so easy now. All you gotta do is literally roll over. Most of the time, we ain't too far from our phone anyway. It's always right yeah. there, you know? <laughs> just roll over and go ahead and, and so y'all, I hope y'all taking that note to just go ahead and put the song in your phone, keep a tablet by your bed if you're a writer. Um, keep it by your bed so that you can be sure that you keep whatever it is that God may be downloading um, for you. Definitely. So you have, because of you, I have been able to go uh, to beautiful places like Paris, uh, Paris and all kinds of countries. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> right, so right, many. Right. But I remember when you called me, um, man, it's this been like a really a long while ago. And I remember you called me and you said, Yolanda, you have a passport? And I said, uh, a what? No. Because it seems so far off, you know. And you said the next, you said, oh, girl, the next time I call, you better have a passport. Six months later, I got a call to go to Japan. And um, I had to get a passport, you know, if I really wanted to take the door that God was giving me. So uh, talk. let's talk about you and these over... <clears throat> experiences you've traveled across the world for many years how has that experience impacted your life um life changing i'm just really grateful for every opportunity um that's a way of life for me you know how i feel about that um gratitude goes a long way um with me i mean if you want to uh, really get the most out of me, get me to go above and beyond, just have a heart of gratitude and let that be the way you live your life. And that's attractive um, to me. And I want to support that. And I want to, um, you know, I don't like pompous. I don't like arrogance. I don't like haughty. You know, I don't care how much you've done or none of that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't cost you anything to be nice and to be humble and to talk to people. And, you know, so, you know, gratitude is, is really what sums up all of the experience from that question. I'm just grateful for all of it. Every door, every country, every stage, every platform. You know, I've been on too many to even name um, in this particular point, but for 20 years, you know, doing it, you could imagine, you know, probably a good, you know, seven or eight of those, you were with me. So you know exactly how that goes. And um, 
I've had so many great people to go, you know, that I've done it with Oscar Williams, Blanche McAllister, Imani, Wendell Parker. I mean, just the list just goes on and on, you know, that are people I've met, Joel Lester, Travis T uh, Taylor. Um, I mean, just so many great people that I've had that opportunity to share that um, opportunity with and, and, and you and so many people. So those are memories that can't be taken away. And you guys uh, made it worthwhile, you know, just the, the times we've had, the long talks, you know, overnight, the flights, the trips, traveling all day, the wear and tear on our bodies, you know, doing 30 concerts over the course of three weeks. <laughs> You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, you know, yeah. it's just it's just been, you know, it was like it's just life changing, you know, something that I'll never forget, you know. And we're gonna do some more of it, you know, too. So okay. is Rona going about her business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, one thing I always I always tell people one one experience that I always thought was really phenomenal is we were uh I don't remember the country, and, and I'm not being funny if y'all watch it, like really there is no exaggeration. I think the first time I went, we were only gone like two weeks. And I promise you, I just remember one stage. I don't remember anything else. Mm -hmm. It's not because I, it was just because it happens so fast. And before you know it, you're home. You, you know, it doesn't kind of yeah. always like that when you're there. Right. You know, and then the more I went, the more I went. I mean, one time we were gone like a whole month. And I just said, man, and it really taught me to maximize the moment, you know, because Definitely. it sometimes you're just in it and before you know it you're back at home and it's like oh what just happened and yeah. you know you're not recognizing you were just on the other side of the world and you know you're sitting at the table with all of these wonderful people uh you're you're eating like real bona fide italian food mm. not fake not made <laughs> in the yeah. I mean, I yeah. mean, real deal you know he has his bowl of days. I have my, you know, I'm the weird eater. So I eat whatever the weird stuff is. And uh, we have this amazing time. But there was one particular time that always sticks out to me. We were at this really large venue. There were, I mean, man, there were thousands of people. And I just never will forget you walking through the aisle, praying as you were singing, and I kept thinking to myself, these people don't know what this boy's saying. But he is walking and praying. And at that moment, I knew that you meant it. I had, I had never really, you know, judged it. But at that moment, I knew. I said, he is the real deal. Because most people just go sing, get the money, come home. But it, it was obvious to me that it was never about that for you. And I just, you know, I just want to thank you for that because it was so beautiful to see that. And after that moment, it didn't matter how many times we sang whatever song, because for me, it was like I'm, I'm sharing an experience with someone whose real mission is to ensure that people hear the message of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. It, absolutely incredible yeah definitely definitely uh, yeah it doesn't matter the language barrier doesn't matter in situations like that your obedience does if god wow. says pray wow. the holy spirit knows what he wants to do with those people in whatever language he want to do it in so it doesn't you know that doesn't bother, that doesn't bother me i remember i was in um in lebanon and i was in a beirut i lived in a little town called astrafia which is about two hours from dubai and I was there uh, for maybe about four months uh, doing the show. And they have like um, these churches, um, you know, where, where, you know, you know, you know, and you, Arabic is one of the hardest languages in the world to even figure out, try, you know, forget, try to write it, to speak and understand it, whatever. But there was this little church that I was going to. I didn't know what they were saying. But when I tell you, I felt the power of God every time I went in there. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, and I was just like, God, I just want to be around people that love you that love Jesus and even though you know <clears throat> they didn't have an interpreter because it wasn't you know I'm you know they didn't know me from a can of paint most of the time when 
think you're black or whatever. They think you're from Africa, not America. So anyway, you know, they weren't making any adjustments for me, but I didn't have to understand what was going on. I felt the spirit of God. I was getting what I needed. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So that's just a testament of anything is possible, which is why I want to jump into what we're going to do and how we're going to bless these creatives tonight, because God shared some things with me um, concerning this. That I believe is going to really change your life. So this is the part, you know, really why I think you guys need to like and share and really, because we're getting ready to really lay some things out because the Holy Spirit ministered to me yesterday uh, about creativity and mm -hmm. ministered to our brothers and sisters about what's happening. And I'm just really excited about it. Well, that's, that's right. So I want to make sure I shout out uh, to Miranda Avant Elliot. Hello. Hello. Hey, that's my friend. That's my prom date. I took her to prom oh, in high prom. school. <laughs> hey. Yeah, I appreciate you. <laughs> We've been friends all this time, and she supports everything that I do. She's here, of course, in St. Louis. She's, uh, I believe, an older woman. She's extremely smart. She graduated 4.0. She went to college. She's a bad girl. And uh, shout out to you. Thank you for jumping on and supporting us tonight. Uh, thank you so much. So shout out to uh, my really good friend who helps me make sure I stay on track with Lamar, a phenomenal photographer in Atlanta, Georgia, Demetrius toll free of freedom radio he says yolanda cedric a couple of my favorite demetrius man listen oakland okay that's all i'm gonna tell you i ain't gonna say no yes. more that's enough you know what that means yes to keep the carter you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the carter uh she has like about four different four or 12 different businesses the oh, girl wow. is phenomenal she's just she's just amazing so shout out to Takita. uh sharonda cupcake Love you. She's a good That's my cupcake. person. Tally Huck Rogers. Listen the, here. The, the singer of singers. <laughs> There's only one Tally only Rogers one. in the world. That's only and one. We're going to move, but I just want you to understand. <laughs> whatever you are in a building that she's in, you need to make sure you're not drinking and not eating nothing. <laughs> Don't have the girl, no the, the girl's bad don't make no sense. And she is just something vicious. Her whole family. Uh, all of them. Every and, last one of them. I love them. I love every last one of them. Amazing. Mary Cox. Hello, Mayo. Hello, Miss Mary Cox. Mayor, that's that's Pastor Mickey King's sister. Listen, and the Mickey King. Listen, no, come on, Pastor man. King. Hi, Pastor King. We love you so so much. Ray Tina. God bless your heart. <laughs> Like Ray Tina, she, she's trying to rival rival me to be your biggest fan, but I'm not coming down off of my, uh, but she's trying to take over after uh, January. She's literally, you literally changed this girl's life, trust me. She talks about you just randomly be like, you know what, I just don't understand how all they come out of their little body. I said, she's been like that since she was 14, singing Y'all yeah, Follow Ray Tina. Um, I'm gonna start crying all over again. I, I I have never in all my years seen all people kind of saying, "All I'm telling you is whatever Cedric has next, and you have a way to get to St. Louis, Missouri. I'm sure she will be there. You need to make yourself get there, and just come with your pillow and your blanket because this girl's gonna lay you out in a in a very very different way. But we love you, Raytina. Uh, Mola Ron, God bless you. Uh, Faye. Uh, Faithfully? Yeah, that's my high school folk. My folks is on here tonight. Hey, y'all. Oh, yeah. Love y'all. Mo, oh, that's my boy, too. Awesome oh. testimony. Mo Leron, follow him. He has an awesome testimony, awesome story. If you see his page, literally, trust me, he does moments and um, it's, it's follow him, too. He's amazing. God has done some phenomenal things in his life. He's literally a walking miracle. I'm talking about for real, for real. And that's Dennis. what I want to slide into. I have three questions, and we're going to keep sliding. Mm -hmm. uh, moving. Well, I do want to say this. A lot of St. Louis people coming on. It, let me just say this in this form. There is a lot of phenomenal gifts in St. Louis, Missouri. Writers, singers, musicians. I mean, just the other night I was having a wonderful conversation with Joey Oscar, and he was sharing how some of the songs that we know today came out of St. Louis, Missouri, came from people's fans out of St. Louis, Missouri. So shout out to the hot uh, St. Louis, Missouri area. Love y'all, everybody. Yes, okay. love y'all too. Those are my people. Man, so Cedric, <laughs> tell me what does it mean to you to be a creative? Um, well, 
Um, actually, just uh, the, the three questions you have about that, kind of just put them all out there because how I'm going to address it is kind of good. Like, I'm, I'm going to have to jump around. So tell me, like, all those questions. You, you said okay. those three. Let's ask the questions at one time. What does it mean to be a creative? What are the top three things creatives should know? How should creatives move in the season? And then I'm going to let you know how you put that. Cool. Yeah, because because I because it, like the way like that it all comes together, all of those things were kind of like he was taking me kind of on a journey, weaver in and out of all those things. So here we go, guys. Let's jump into this. Um, the number one thing you need to know as a creative is what your purpose is. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you don't know your purpose and what God has put you on earth to do, you don't know what you need to be creative about. You don't know what you need to, you don't know what, how you need to package and figure out how to creatively display what he's given you if you don't know what that is. <laughs> okay. So you got to get your purpose. You got to be sure and very sure that this is what God has called you. I don't care if it's a pastor, if it's a lawyer, if it's an artist, if it's a, a whatever it is, you got to be sure that this is my life's. But this is what I'm supposed to be doing with my time and my energy. The reason why this is so important, because you might say, well, how do I know my, my purpose? I don't really know what my purpose is. How do I figure out what that is? You determine purpose by what brings resurrection. OK, what does that mean? What, whatever you do, what is it that you do that if it were dead, you could make it live again? That's what you're called to. What can you resurrect? If you don't have the power to resurrect something, then you're not called to it. Okay. What an, an example is oh. if you if you are a singer and you get up, even if you can actually sing, if you are a singer specifically in church, since we church folks tonight, um, for the most part, if the church is just as dead after you sang as it was before, then you're not called to sing because you couldn't resurrect. You couldn't bring resurrection in that service. So the first thing you need to understand about creativity is understanding what your purpose is and you determine purpose by what you are able to resurrect. If you if kids don't like you, you ain't no youth pastor. You don't need to be creative about nothing, about what you can take them on those trips and how to do nothing. You don't need to get creative about that because you ain't called the kids because they don't like being around you. <laughs> you can't resurrect kids. So you look at your life and say, okay, when I do this, I see results. I see fruit behind this. When I do this, I see signs. I see wonders. I see exploits. I see um, you know, people's lives being changed and lives being made better as a result of me, what I offer this to the world or when I offer this to people, when I offer this to the body of Christ. So you determine purpose by what brings the resurrection. You got to find out what your purpose is, because the reason why, because when you start getting creative, creativity is going to literally take every fiber of your being to walk out. When you start get, get, being creative, it's going to cause a level of sacrifice that's going to literally take everything you've got to do it. So you don't want to be trying. It's going to take a sacrifice. It's going to take money. It's going to take investment in yourself. And you don't want to put all of those things in a creative process that you uh, you don't want to put all those things in a creative process uh, towards something that you can't resurrect. Lord have mercy. You don't have time. Matter of fact, keep your money in your pocket. Wow. Don't, don't, don't you spend nothing if you owe nothing that you are not called to. Because if you don't, I'm telling y'all, y'all better share this because we get ready to go somewhere. I promise you here. If you can't resurrect it, you're not called to it. Do you hear me? Okay. So you need, some of us need to ask God to give us a divorce emotionally from things that we are pursuing that we are not called to. If you've been doing it 20 years and you ain't seen no results, you need to go back and get on your face and seek God to find out what it is he's called you to.
Why am I here? So that's the very first thing you need to know about being a creative is what the purpose, what your purpose is so that you'll know what it is you need to be creative about. OK, um, the cost of creativity is high. And um, and so um, it's going to cost everything. So so it's, it's going to take literally everything you have. And so now moving over to how do you be creative? I'm going to tell you something about marketing, about branding, about all of the, the different things that, are, that, 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 that it takes to be creative creative to tell a story what it takes to be creative to tell to sell yourself well, no matter what you're representing if you're representing Jesus if you're representing Jesus if you're representing your brand if you're representing your whatever you're doing well, you got to have the the number one thing a creative needs is to be able to tell a story See, the power of story is it helps us to find the point of the story that we're connected to that's the power of story. And the best and, 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 and really storytelling is the best form of teaching because we're all wired for narrative. OK, we're all wired for that. That's why it's important that, that that creatively package yourself in a way that tells your story uh, and attach that to whatever it is you're called to. Because if people find themselves in your story, they're going to support your brand. If people find themselves yeah. in the middle of what you are doing, if they're able to identify as something by the way you've packaged what you're presenting to the world, then that's going to give th that's going to give them an opportunity uh, to say, okay, you know what, I can get with that because the ways that was so creative at how you know, and I understand the story behind why she sings, why she does what she does, and now that makes me hungry and makes me want to support, and also ignites something in me that makes me want to do something more than I was already doing for myself that's the power of creativity right there okay and so um really quick um some people you know uh, and so um and so when i get down this list uh so so storytelling is the best form of teaching because everybody is wired uh for narrative in this season everybody what you got to understand is you got to find a, a mentor in your creative process OK, you got to find somebody that have already done well. Once you figure out what you're called to, you got to then find somebody that's already thriving in the area that you're feeling a pull of God toward. You got to find somebody that's successfully doing it because that's the power right there of being connected to having a strong mentor as it relates to creativity is, um, you know, um, because really the diff the only difference between a mentor and a, and, and a mentee is, is that um, when you're sharing um, your creativity, the only difference between you and me is, is that I got a chance to read the book first. I got a chance to get the knowledge first. I got a chance to understand it first. So I'm able to give it to somebody else. So once you become empowered, then you have an opportunity to be able to go and share, you know what I'm saying? The real wealth of information is wisdom uh, that you have to offer, um, you know, you know, to other people who are looking for answers. But um, glory to God, if you don't do nothing with what you get, then, you know, it's a lot of people, you know how you'll be around people where they just ask a lot of questions. I want to know what's going on. I just want to know. I just want to know. I want to know. But most most of the time, we just gather information just to know something, but we don't really want to use the wisdom behind what it is we've gathered. You know, so some people just want to know to collect information. But when you become a creative and you get into a space where you begin to search within yourself to find the creative ways to package your story, to make it appealing, to reach people uh, to, to the masses of people, then what you got to do is once you get in the right environment of it, that's why. So you got to get in the in, in the right environment of of what you're called to, because uh, I think it was uh, Bishop E. L. Warren said this years ago. He says you need to get in the environment of your vision. If you don't, the environment you're in will become your vision. I'm going to say that one more time. You got to get in the environment of your vision. If not, the environment you're in will become your vision. In other words, don't just stay on the corner. If you're growing up, show your nieces, your nephews, another life, another environment outside of what they're doing out on the street. Because if don't if you don't, if they don't see another narrative, the environment that they're in will become all that they see, and that and it will become all that they know. 
you know? And so um, that's the importance of environment and being around people that are, um, you know, that are, that are expressive. Um, I want to write, I want to share a couple of things real quick. This, this really, this really um, blessed me. It's like, you know, one of the time I have a mentor and I called him um, a couple of weeks ago and I told him, I said, thank you so much for waking up the me in me. <laughs> He, he showed me some stuff about myself. He, like he believes in me in ways that you know that I can do things I never really dreamed, you know, that I could do. But because he's already done it, I trust him because I've seen the fruit of what he's able to do. And now I'm reaching now in some areas that I would not have wanted to even be creative in because I felt inadequate. I felt insecure about you know what I was really called to, and I didn't want to be creative. So the enemy was using my insecurity to suffocate my creativity. And if you're not careful, the enemy will use your insecurity. He'll use that to suffocate and drag the life out of what you really called to. And, and it, it's a sad thing if you've been called to resurrect something and you sitting on what you can resurrect. Glory to God, because of depression, because of because of all of these things that weigh on your life. So if you're creative, you need the spirit of revival to hit your creativity so that you can be passionate again about the thing that you're called to. I'm going to speak to somebody tonight. I'm going to speak to, I came on her on purpose tonight and I came to help somebody on purpose tonight. Okay. Um, so what happens is, um, um, so, let me, so this is my definition. This is one answer to your question. This is my definition of creativity. Well, first of all, before I say that, let me say this. Competition is an enemy of creativity. I'm going I'm 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 to help somebody tonight. Com <laughs> competition is me. Being creative is not about you trying to, being creative is not about you um, trying to be better than the next person or to outdo the next person or to try to, um, you know, that's not, that's not what being creative is about. It's not trying to say, okay, well, they talk about this or now they get ready to talk about me. No, no, no. No, your true creativity, your true creativity is going to come when you find out who you are because you're going to realize that nobody can do what you can do. You're the only one that's uniquely called to do what you do. So if you get caught up in competition, then you've opened up the door to stifle your ability to maximize, glory to God, to maximize who it is that God has called you to be. Glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost right there. And, and so and so this is what this is the answer to your second question. Creativity to me is me building my thing. Watch this, Mitch. Creativity is me building my thing over here, you building your thing over there, and then we come together to celebrate our differences. I'm going to say that one more time. I'm going to say that one more time. Creativity is me building my thing over here, you building your thing over there, and then we coming together to celebrate our differences. See, when somebody creatively is free, you ain't got no time to be jealous of, man, over what nobody else is doing. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a whole lot of people that in, that's in your life right now. To some people that are watching me, they want to clap for you, but they can't clap because jealousy got their hands tied. Jealousy, jealousy, or jealousy will will tie your hands to people that are even have even supported you that you would want to support them, but because of that spirit of competition on you, uh, that, that you always that's why you'll never be past where you are until you are able to open up your spirit, open up your mouth, open up yourself to say, God, free me from this. Because I need to be free because my creativity is being stifled and I don't have a desire anymore to even be who I am. It's because you're trying to compete to stay up with the times or to be what a record company wants you to be or to be whatever the last big thing was. No, God's original intention is always what he has called you to. He's never changed his mind about you. And what he calls you to resurrect, guess what? Those people going to stay dead till you open up your mouth. Oh my God, all of your Lazaruses, the people that have been assigned to your voice, glory to God. I don't care what happens. I don't care how you sing. I don't care if you, 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 you did evolve with the times. You should, you should remain skillful. I'm not saying don't be skillful. What I'm saying is 
Tasha Cobbs has an audience. Guess what? But so do you, Yolanda. There are people that are only going to respond to Yolanda and the way God gave it to Yolanda. And those are only the people that are going to get up. And when you creatively package your story, your testimony, your, your, your history, when you, when you bring that thing to life, when you allow the Holy Ghost to walk, well, y'all better share this right now because something about to happen in here. Go shine by by I feel the Holy Ghost. And I'm, I'm not trying to preach. I'm trying to talk. But, I, but I'm passionate about this because so many people are stuck not being able to be fruitful in what God has called them to do. And so competition is an enemy of creativity. You need to find you a mentor. I want you to know that, thank God for your friends that you can talk to in your life that understand. Oh my God. When God give you, you might not get but one or two people that get it. But when I tell you, you better hold on to those one or two because friends who get it are a treasure. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Friends who understand, friends that you can actually chop it up with that you know don't have no malice in their heart about you. Don't 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 have no underlining issues. Don't have no no sneaky none none none, none behind the you know un, none under the table. Those kind of people are a treasure to have in your life because you ain't got to worry about them praying against you uh behind your back while they smiling in your face. See, you got to understand something. Uh, don't 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 take advantage for those people that you have in that space that that wire and fuel your creativity. Okay, because let's guess what? You can't tell. You can't tell. Listen, if you're embarking on this journey, you got to guard your heart. Listen to me tonight, y'all. You can't talk about everything with everybody, especially when you're being creative and you're just learning it for yourself for the first time. You got to have like minded individuals. Like minded individuals are a treasure, they're a gift from God. Um, and, and so, and when you have somebody that you can trust and say, you know what, this is what's on my heart. This is what they get it. They're not talking you out of your dream. They're not talking you out. They're not before they even understand. They're not printing out and doing it. You gotta, you gotta be careful who you share this stuff with. Everybody is not your friend. When it comes to this kind of stuff, a lot of us have allowed other people's opinions to talk us out of our resurrection power. Somebody will catch that. Later on, so we, 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 we've laid our resurrection of the same power that lay raised Jesus from the dead living on the inside of you. And you sitting up here questioning yourself over somebody else's opinion about your story. OK, so uh, uh, um, and so and so, um, you know, and so and, and, and another thing I want to tell you about creativity is. Look, don't look at, at look at it as something you have to do. Look at it as something you get to do. Glory to God. Don't look at it as something you have because because see we, when you make it work when you make it tiring when you make it um you know to the point where uh you know this is a tedious thing I I've, I've got to do this I've got to do it. no 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 I get to do it. look at look at what's going on in our times right now as it comes down to race uh, systemic racism and uh, the pro uh, the protesting that's happening right now and the coronavirus and everything that's happened the pandemic that we're in right now I'm talking about the mindset of a creative right now I'm talking about the mindset of a creative the mindset of a creative is i don't have to do it i get to do it okay so in other words if you in, in the middle if i look at what's going on right now from a creative perspective in this pandemic right now um if if uh if you if you want to go outside the house to go into walmart you don't have to wear a mask you get to wear one Lord have mercy. Uh Jesus, if if you if you desire, if you desire, if you desire, if you desire to uh go to a a, a church service or go to a a, a a a building or a party or an event, uh you don't when you get there in order to be safe, you don't uh have to social distance, you get to. It's it's my it's my it's my privilege. For me to do that. So I need I need creatives to understand something. You got to look at your mindset. It's not something that I have to do. It's something that I get to do. It's a privilege. I didn't have to come on your live tonight and share any revelation. But I but I, I didn't I didn't look at it as, oh God, this is something that I got to do. I look at it as an opportunity. This is something that I get to do.
<laughs> I get to come on and ignite the passion and ignite the revival in your audience. I get to come on and talk to the few creatives who are bold enough to say that this is what I this is where I am and I'm trying to get out of this place and I want to unleash my creativity, but I'm afraid to allow the Holy Ghost to be who he is in my life for me to be bold enough to be me. Glory to God. I love my brothers on here right now. I would love if I could sing like Mitch or sing like some other people. I don't guess what? I don't have a problem with that. I, 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 I but there's a unique uh, ability that God gave me that I have to be locked into. That I have to be. That I have to be. That I have to be. And, and, and so, you, if you're stuck with trying to be competitive and be like somebody else, you missed the whole opportunity and you forfeited everything God put on the inside of you to walk in your creativity. It's not something that you have to do. It's something that you get to do. Glory to God. Quit looking at investing in yourself as work. It's a privilege that you're able to resurrect something. It's a privilege that you can make a dead thing live again if you open up your mouth and sing, or if you open up your, your, your skill set and, and, and see results and see fruit and see all of these different manifestations of the power of God happening in your life and through whatever you have to do. It's a doggone shame for God to think enough of you to place all of that inside of you and you waste all of that creativity tripping over something that happened yesterday. Tripping over something that you can't do nothing about. Tripping, measuring yourself up to the next person. And then you got the nerve to waste years of your life sitting on the sideline feeling sorry for yourself and resurrection power is in your belly. How dare you? Like we got that kind of time to waste. Time ain't long as it has been and it ain't short as it's going to be. Whatever you're going to do for God, you better do it now. Glory to God. Whatever you, you think you got time, you ain't got time. Glory to God. You ain't got the time that you think you have. So you need to get uh, 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 clear on that. So look at, so, so here it goes, uh, true leadership and creativity. So you got to be creative even in how you watch. Because most people that are really creative, you need a team. Because, see, the next major move of God that's about to break forth, that's, got, that's about to happen in life, is going to happen through collaboration. Glory to God. It's going to happen through collaboration. You, you, no man is an island. You better, you better find and be grateful for your village. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And see, let me tell you what true leadership is as it relates to creativity and how you mirror these things. Um, uh, 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 true leadership is not telling other people what they can do. It's showing them. Oh, Father. It's not telling people, uh, oh, yeah, this is what you're going to do. No, it's actually showing people physically. This is how you walk through the valley. This is how you walk through what's going on. Glory to God. This glory to God. Is is it, 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 it? You you you're wasting everything that God put on the inside of you. Glory to God. So and, and when you're being creative, can I minister to somebody real quick? Um, well, when I minister to somebody, uh, guard your heart around your creative process. Okay, you ain't got. You don't respond to every comment. <laughs> don't engage in, in every provocation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There are some, uh, um, there is some work. If, if you take a note, you need to write this down. There is some work that we have to do that allows us to continue to do the work. Oh my God. I'm going to say that one more time. There is some work I'm talking about on yourself inside of you that you have to do in order that, that will allow you to continue to do the work that you're doing. You don't get an, you don't get an opportunity to forfeit um, the, the, the thing that God is causing you to come together on. See, this is what this is the problem, Yolanda. This is why I love what you're doing for creatives, uh, you know, on Sunday nights. The reason why I love it is because um, because see, you can't you can skip uh, a lot of people want to get where they want to go real fast and they want to they want to skip the process of what they got to do but now this is now you can skip you can skip if you have the foundation you can move ahead if you know the foundation look at you cannot build knowledge without the foundation 
So many people want to skip ahead, but they're trying to do it without the foundation. Glory to God. You don't have, you haven't put in the preparation work on the ground level while you're trying to add all this stuff on top that you see everybody else doing, but you don't know the price that everybody else has paid to walk in those situations and those circumstances. So you better go back and make sure your foundation is good. Because you kind of build on top of something based on what you see, because our technology information that we're in right now is so fast. It's such a fast paced microwave mentality where people are becoming internet sensations by posting one video and getting millions of views. And you're seeing this and you're seeing a, 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 a lot of things going on and a lot of things happening and a lot of things happening in life and moving on. But I'm telling you right now about the power of the Holy Ghost, that you better understand that you better not skip your foundational stages because at the moment you get to build, at the time you think you're about to elevate, you, the, the bottom of what you're doing, the, the, the bottom of it is going to fall out because you didn't take time to cultivate foundation, the foundation of your prayer life, the foundation of your intimacy, the foundation of you building your relationship, the foundation of you walking in the, uh, you know, in, in building a uh, uh, communication and communion with God. All right. All right. And so, and so here, uh, and, you know, and so what I want to challenge uh, every creative on the line tonight to do. I'm getting ready to shout you. This shout at me. I don't know about nobody else, but listen to this. He said, he, God told me, he said, Cedric, if you want to be creative, if you want to, if you want to release what I put on the inside of you tonight, he said, what I want you to do, he said, you got to keep your filter clean. Glory to God. Oh, I, I said, God, what are you talking about? Talk to me about that. He said, you got to keep your filter clean. He said, your filter, uh, the filter, he said, the filter of your life. The filter of your life, your heart and your mind. I said, God, how do you do that? He he, he took me back, he lined it to my roots. He said, the best way to keep your filter clean is by living a life of gratitude. A lot of y'all can't ascend creatively because your gratitude is too low. Oh my God. <laughs> you don't have an altitude or an ability to lift Jesus up where he belongs because your gratitude is down on the ground where you should be praising, you're complaining. Oh my God. Where you should be grateful that you, for what you have, you're sitting up here measuring it according to what somebody else has done. Keep your filter clean. Keep your filter clean. The filter of your heart, the filter of your mind. And you do that, grat gratitude and gra have gratitude for yourself. Don't let it get lost. I know a lot of people say, oh, you did, you did, a, you did, you did good. Oh, to God be the glory. No, no. Sometimes you just receive the fact that you did good. It's okay for you to give yourself that encouragement to say, you know what? Yeah, I, I, I did whatever I had to do to make sure that I was clean enough to give you this message. I was clean up. So yeah, so walk in that and, 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 and use that gratitude that you get back to, to clean your filter. Because when your filter is clean, it's going to open up the channel for creativity to pour out of you like never before. Glory to God. It's going to pour out of you like never before. So keep your filter clean. I want you to know creatives, be encouraged tonight. Creatives, be, be encouraged tonight because, because being a creative and if you're really anointed and living life, I want you to know that you have an, an owl of Patmos experience. I want you to know creativity costs you something. Innovation cost you something. Most of the time, we think it costs just the blessed wood and tears, but what it really costs you is sacrificing your flesh in his presence. <laughs> the real time that he's looking for is for you to get on your face. That's what the answer is. The answer is you getting turning your face away from the world and from the distractions of what's going on that's stopping the flow of what the, the creative energy is fueled by the Holy Ghost. Your creative energy, that's where it comes from. So as you spend time on the Isle of Patmos, the Isle of Patmos where John was on, the word Patmos means the place of my killing. The place of my killing. I'm at the place of my killing. And I want you to know that being a creative, can I just talk to somebody real quick, can be a lonely place. Oh, Lord, y'all don't want to talk about this. Now, I thought y'all was having a conversation. The, be, being creative, is it, it, it can be a lonely place. Hallelujah. And that's why I always make sure my gratitude is on 10. I always be grateful. Guess what? I don't get no days off on being grateful. 
You know why? Because depression don't take a holiday. Sadness don't take a holiday. Turmoil don't rest. You don't get no off days with gratitude. And there's a difference between being thankful and being grateful. If I tell you, you got on a nice dress, you'll say, thank you. That was a compliment that you gave me. But if I, but if you go and walk away from a drunk driver head on collision and you get up and walk out without a scratch on your body, you'll then be grateful. There's a difference between thankful and grateful. Thankfulness sometimes can be situational, but gratitude runs deep. It's a posture. It's an attitude about God and his ability to be God in any and every situation. Woo. Glory to his name. And so uh, another way to keep your creativity flowing is understanding that love is always right. It's always right. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what people say, what they do. Their pe love, if you loving people, the Bible says, if you don't have love, whatever you do profits nothing. It doesn't profit anything. You can prophesy. You can do all that kind of stuff. But if you do it without love, the Bible says it falls to the ground. Love is always right. It's always right. And it will take you. And when you begin to love yourself, see, see, I'm not even talking about let somebody else love. I don't want to, I don't even want to get into relation. That's a whole nother show that you have to bring me back for about relationships. But, but listen, I don't even want to talk about that, but because a lot, most of us, that's why we can't pick the right person because the wrong person coming into your life will shut down your creativity. Tell me I'm a lie. I'll wait. The wrong person having access to your secrets, having access to the innermost parts of your heart, having access to the secret things that God has put in your life will cause you looking at you like God never put nothing in you in the first place. And you'll be sitting up and see the, the power of this thing is you got to understand is you got to learn how not to look at yourself through the lens of other people. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Not only can I not look at myself in the lens of other people, but I also can't allow, I can't judge people's situations by looking at their situation through my lens. Oh, Jesus. I don't know what you paid to walk in what you're walking in. I don't know. I don't know the cost of the oil that's in your box. I, I just know what I had to maintain and what I had to come through to be able to release my creative energy. Glory to God. I know what I have, but I'm not gonna let no devil in hell shut me up another day. I'm sitting up here in the middle of 2020, in the middle of a pandemic, and I'm sitting back here questioning, and I've already seen that some of y'all already got fruit. Some of y'all have already seen God has already anointed, opened up doors for you, provided for your crazy tail, giving you access, giving you favor, giving you connections, divine connections. And you still, glory to God, sitting on your do nothing, not producing anything, not walking in anything. The fastest way to your destiny is a divine connection. That's the fastest route. That's why you can't be an island because you can't be you can't be uh, thinking that it's only about you. I can do it myself. No, you're gonna need some people. Like, you're gonna need you're gonna need somebody. You're gonna need somebody. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna need somebody. The fastest way to your route is uh, is a divine connection. What does that mean? It means it's divine. Some of y'all trying to rationalize it out with your intellect. It ain't gonna make sense when God does it or how God does it all the time. It's divine. The divinity of God in that state of mind, he'll call. What do you mean? The Holy Ghost will put your name on people's lips. So y'all don't want to receive that on this live tonight because y'all so used to people talking about you that you don't even know how to accept what somebody say or when God tells you, I'm going to make the Holy Ghost talk about you. Because all some of y'all need right now is for somebody to speak your name in an arena that you don't have access to. And your whole life will change for the rest of your life based on one phone call. Some of y'all on the line have experienced it. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, um, uh, all they got to do is say something simple like, have you ever considered so-and-so? Oh, she's such a nice person. 
Oh, oh yeah, I know so and so and so and so the best. But I'm telling you right now, even off stage, I had such a good time with this person. That's a, those are the things that 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 innate that innovation that creativity those things that fuel make that makes people want to be around you. People are not just buying into your ability anymore. The day of your talent and your ability being enough is gone. They want to know what your character look like. They want to know what your character look like because a lot of people want to look like God. Amen. Well, we powerful when we got the mic in our hand uh, uh, up in front of the people when we sing it, but we don't want to look like him when we put the mic down. It's the character that we're lacking. What is the character? The character of God is the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, meekness, gentleness, temperance, patience, all of that. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got none of those fruit in action anymore. And no, guess what? Those things will stifle your creativity. You know what I'm saying? Because even if you can sing down, if your attitude is nasty, I'm good. And I definitely ain't get ready to pay you to come be no fool. I'm not going to fly you in to be extra. Glory to God. I got better things I can do with my money than the soul and discord and confusion and haughtiness, and arrogance. Low is the way. Get down. You're too low. Glory to God. That's right, darling. Relationships are everything in this business. Networking is everything. The, the You are only as good as your name, not your voice. Not necessarily your ability. Your name, your name is going to supersede your ability. A bad name or kill your creativity. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. All day. All day. I don't care. I don't care. I know what I'm talking about right now, right up and through here. Okay, I've seen it too many times. Okay, and so love will will, will, will will give you the need to produce the things you need on the inside of you. Not just not just the things you need for right now, but they'll produce the things you need for the future. I pray that you find joy in the success and the well being of others. Because when you take on that attitude, baby, creativity is flying out of you. It's going to start pouring. When you begin to take joy in the success of others, when you begin to take joy in the well-being of others, if I talk to you and you tell me, you know what? God healed me of something. Glory to God. He did it again. If he did it for you, if he did it for you, that's just like him doing it for me. Glory to God. I'm happy about when I live in that space, he's going to trust me. What ideas? He's going to trust me with the ability. Mm. 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 Glory to God. He's going to trust me. I want to see other people do well. I want to see it. I, I desire, I desire to, to live my life in that space. Okay. I desire to live my life in that space. So anyway, um, I know I went uh, all tonight, but I just wanted to kind of just kind of just kind of get that out tonight. But uh, I want to just close with this little story that about CC Winans. Um, she said something that changed my life. One day I was watching on TBN back when you know the fire was on it. <laughs> Amen. And I was and I was looking at it and stuff. And uh, she was on there. She was being interviewed. Um, yes, yes, Darwin. Oh my God! Listen, D Darwin Hobb just said something. I got to say something about that. He said, "There's too much time developing the art and not enough of the heart." I want you to know that the that the eight year olds got the art, <laughs> but I want you to know their heart. If we don't lay that thing on the altar, that thing is wicked and above all deceitful. I didn't say that. The word did. <laughs> I'm telling you, you better make sure you go out of the heart flows the issues of life. If you got heart issues, you got creative issues. Say it again. If you got heart issues, you got creative issues. See, a lot of people see we can we can give you the master plan or the formula or the two steps or the 12 steps to be creative and do all this other kind of stuff. But the truth of the matter is, if your heart ain't right, what good is it going to do? Because when your heart is right, those other things come naturally. They flow out of you like a river. They flow out of you like a necessity, like, uh, you know, just like people have need to drink. You know, people have a desire to be around you because they know that if they do, they're going to get life is going to be around you. Life is going to come out of you. That is the life of a creative. Right there. 
Glory to God. That's that's the life of a of a of a creative, you know. And um and so uh anyway, the story I was gonna tell you about Cece real quick. Um, she says, and this is this is what you got to understand about because creativity is a state of being. It's not a one time thing. It's not something that you um have to master. Okay, well I'm going to do it because no, it's a space that you have to live in. It's a space where mentally you have to do your subconscious and you have to do all of the um, the the work on your soul, your mind, your will, your intellect, your emotions and your imaginations. You have to do the work in this area to make sure that those things are in a good space, because these are the things that release creativity. OK, and so Cece said this woman, because everybody know that Cece is Jesus little sister, right? Okay, so so what happened is the lady was like, well, how is it, CC, that when you sing that everybody, like every time you open your mouth, would you have immediate access? You have immediate access. Like, um, you know, like whenever you open that mouth, Jesus just come. When CeCe, when CeCe put a lift up her hand, start singing, it's like Jesus said, okay, stop everybody. CC singing. Okay. It's like, you know, that, that, that type of thing. And she said, and the lady asked, that was interviewing CC asked her, she said, how is it that when you sing, you get this kind of move of God every time? I guess she was expecting something answered, but you know how unassuming CC can be? She said, you know, um, she said, how do you get this, you know, that, that type of presence to show up every time you sing? And Cece said this one simple line. She said, I live there. <laughs> I know y'all was waiting on something deep. I was too. But when I, but when I sat there and thought about that thing, she was like, no, it's not something that I have to do. When, when it's time for me to get up and minister, I ain't got to channel nothing up. I ain't got to become nothing. I ain't got to try to work up nothing. I ain't got to try to figure out how I can, you know, use my gift to get me over this moment because I've been acting so crazy otherwise. <laughs> no, she said, I live there. Does that mean, did she say I was perfect? No. She said, I lived, I, I do my best at a, at a place to live in that space. I'm going to stop right there because I could talk about this all night long. You know, but and I don't do this often. You know, there's only a few people that can even call me to even get me to come on and talk like this about something like this because I'm not really a go live guy. Yolanda obviously is one of those people. There's a couple of other people out there, but you know, uh, you can um, have your you know your floor back and you have questions or uh, you know uh, before we pray or whatever you want. You know, whatever you want to do. I'm just really trying to not run like some of us are trying to do something mean, like sit still because I think you said number one just shout out to everybody who's come on. Um, you know, you have producer and the thing at the same time. Uh shout out to Darwin Hobbs. Thank you so much, sir, for even gracing us um, you know, with, with your, love with your him. time. Um, I Ashlyn, love him so much. That uh, is from Sunday. that is my mentor right there. He's one of my biggest inspirations, one of my biggest mentors. He believed in me at a time where I didn't even believe in myself. I really didn't thank you, Darwin. I appreciate it um, so much. I mean, just all of the, everything. I don't even have enough words to even describe the level of honor and respect that I have for you um, and what you have you poured into me so selflessly and, um, you know, how you've shared your time, your energy, your money, your talent. Then you, you're the true epitome of what um, somebody like me, a creative, will need. And thank you so much uh, for even jumping on this live. And even you being on here tonight um, is, is, is a testament of, you know, our relationship. And I want to publicly say thank you so much. And, uh, man, I honor you forever for that. I'm going to jump down to something he just said. He said, iron. Yep. What did he say? Where did it go? Oh, here okay, it is. He said, iron sharpens iron. And that's absolutely uh, the truth. We definitely shout out to Ashton Cole from um, this season Sunday Vest. Uh, as I said before, and I will say again, I said it to her privately, and I'll say it publicly again. I, I think Sunday Vest is, you know, I think Sunday Vest is one of many platforms, and it's just all of really about what you do with it. It's 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 just it's just one door. Can can I say something about Sunday mm -hmm. Best? I wasn't gonna do it. Melissa, hold the monkeys. Okay, uh, keep them on standby. But uh, that's an inside joke between me and my friend. But listen, can I say something about Sunday? But in, in, and not just Sunday, but any platform. Whenever you do it, Sunday, best is reality TV. Okay, 
just reality TV. You got to know that, number one. Uh, but any platform, The Voice, American Idol, Sunday Bay, whatever it is that gives you a maximum exposure to a lot of people, you got to understand maximum exposure does not equivalent to the blessing of the Lord. What you have to understand is, is that, is that, um, Whenever you are walking out the plan, I was talking about that purpose a minute ago, how you determine your purpose by what bring re brings resurrection. Whatever you do that if it were dead, you can make it live again. That's what you're called to. Whatever you can resurrect, okay? So what I'm saying here is if God himself, okay, if he gave you that particular power to walk in that thing Sunday, but you need to trust and walk in obedience to his plan for your life. And if you're going to do a show like that, then make sure that your hope is in him and not the show. Oh my God. Your, your dependency should be on God and not the platform. Y'all ain't going to like this. Uh, 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 because you can get the platform and win the platform and go through a whole bunch of stuff and still not be any further than where you were before you started the process. So if you know who you are and who God has called you to be, then you can use the platform in its proper perspective to advance the agenda that God has for your life, if that's something you're going to do. But don't put all of your hope in the platform and don't, don't cancel your hope in God because you got on a platform. And if you are putting your hope in platform and think because you're on the platform that all the work is done, then you're deceitfully wicked and you've been fooled and bamboozled if you think that it's all over because of something like that and if your hope is in you being accepted and acknowledged by celebrities and more people knowing your name and you think that that's the call of god on your life I, my heart goes out to you i'm actually sad for you if you think that that that, 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 that that's the purpose of what God's doing. If you don't have the, if you're not mentally strong enough to to handle um, the applause of men, which can be intoxicating, then guess what? It, it can be, um, let me say this. You have to be just as prepared for success as you do failure. Both of them have preparation periods. Because if you fail and you're not mentally able to process the failure, you will feel creatively a failure and you won't produce anything. If you succeed in the world's eyes and you walk in into success and you get that, but you're not prepared to handle what comes along with that or you don't have a work ethic to maximize your 15 minutes, then you don't have anything there either. So you would want to keep your trust in God from the beginning to the end. And, 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 and so many people feel like if I can just get on a platform that is done, it's the biggest lie the enemy could ever tell you. You need to trust God. I'm, am I saying don't go on those platforms? That is not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if you go or if you choose to do that, you better do it with the mindset of I'm getting ready to use this as a brick in the piece of the puzzle for what God is doing in my life. I'm not getting ready to cancel the will and the heart and the mindset of God for my life for a platform. Or because of what somebody tell me they're going to do for me. Okay. Anyway, I'm, 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 I'm going to leave that alone because that's a touchy subject for me. Um, you know, I'm passionate about that because I'm tired of seeing people hurt behind it and seeing people literally lose their minds and people, you know, go through a whole bunch of different things. And you know what I'm saying? And just unnecessary stuff because we ain't got that intent right. We got that intent right. And that creativity don't flow just because you got a platform. You need creativity. You need an ability. You need a God breathing um, anointing. You need a, you need a God uh, idea. You need something flowing out of you. And you got to trust him in that. You know what I'm saying? Because when he does it his way, you, I'm telling you, once he place you in the thing, there'll be nobody that could. Because if man give you the platform, they can also take it away. You don't believe me? Look at the history. And I'm going to leave that alone. I'm not even going to touch that. Look at the history. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 All that you just said, daughter, I see all of that. You know, so so I'm just saying, so, so, so you would want to find the security of what God has called you to and be confident in that thing. Be confident in it. Glory to God. Be confident in it. What he gave you, don't shortchange yourself. 
because other people say you should be further. You don't know where I should be. You don't know what he's shielding me from. You don't know what kind of mercy and grace that I that I have just to be able to get up and put my pants on one leg at a time. You don't know the call. You don't know what what's what's really happening for you. You know what people show you on their pages, but people ain't posting their failures on their Instagram pages. They're giving you a highlight reel of the life that they want to have. But true creatives pay a price and have to live in season sometime in the valley, have to go through wilderness and have to pay price for great cost to walk out the oil of God that's on everybody's life that he has a purpose and a plan for. Don't substitute the mission and the will and the processing of God for platform. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's a trick of the enemy you'll be more depressed because then what happens is you'll get that extreme high everybody on your wall on your facebook wall oh my god you're so great can you come to my church can you do this can you do this and that lasts for about a few months and then as soon as it die down and you sit at home in the dark looking stupid because ain't nobody calling you ain't got a record ain't got a song ain't got nothing people know you for ain't got nothing to do and you're going through all of that kind of stuff and you still don't have anything to show for it you ain't seen a low until you've experienced an extreme high that you weren't ready for. My God. But don't call Shamba that that'll be your call, Saya. Shandi that it'll be your call, Rabba that it'll be your so called, and that'll be us. Glory to God. 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 Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm telling you, you'll get a peace that'll come over you when you are in the will of God. The power of God on your life, you'll be satisfied where he placed you and you'll trust him. For him to take you where he wants you to go and to reveal everything that he put on the inside of you. Glory to God. Don't forfeit that. to be seen for a few minutes, which was nothing but a setup for the devil to make you lose your mind. On the other side of that, don't count yourself out because God didn't choose that route for you. He knows what he's doing. He knows what his plan, his thoughts toward you are good and not of evil to give you an expected end. Glory to God. Woo, sha. Look, 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 look. Only what you do for Christ will last. Only what you do for him. Only what you do for him. That song messed me up one day because I looked up the next line of that song. It says, only what we do for Christ will be counted in the end. I looked up the word counted. It means accepted, acknowledged, or permitted. So, so the song could sing like this. Only what you do for Christ will last. Only what you do for him will be accepted, will be acknowledged, and be permitted in the end. Why is that important? Because so many people have lost their minds over some stuff that in the end won't even count. Because it wasn't for his glory. It wasn't for his glory. And so many, so many people have gotten divorced over things that in the end won't even count. It won't even be accepted. <laughs> it won't even be acknowledged. It won't even be permitted. People have stopped being friends 
covenant relationships have been destroyed. People have been given major platforms to serve other national artists as background singers and background vocalists. They've trusted you with their platforms and y'all have made a fool out of them by singing leads on their songs and talking about them behind their backs. Because people got in your ear talking stupid to you, trying to tell you, you better, you this, you that. In the end, won't even count. Learn the heart of service, the heart of servitude. Glory to God. It can be done the right way. His way. It's nothing wrong with serving and investing time in another man's vision while he's cultivating something in you. And even when you get your own platform, you don't have to walk away always from the thing that invested in you when you didn't even have an investment. I don't care what level it was on. Your creativity will be stifled if you think otherwise. You'll get out there on your own having not done it right and trying to be creative and everything you do from that point on, I don't care how, how many records you put out, how many singles on iTunes you put, it won't even be counted. Because you didn't do it for him. You did it to show somebody else or to prove something to somebody else. It won't be accepted. It won't be acknowledged. It won't be permitted. Honor the people that put you on. Marette Brown Clark does it beautifully. She won a Stella on her own, still singing in Vision Choir. I'll wait. I'll wait. Stop letting these people have you walking around splashing in little puddles, acting like you're walking in a river. We know it's not a river. The river of God ain't coming out of you. That's you over there splashing in puddles, trying to make a puddle look like a river. But people that can discern, we know there ain't no life in that puddle. Go ahead, Yolanda, because I'm 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 just I don't know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> oh my god, I'm really trying to keep it together. Wow. What well, one reason I, I wanted you to you, you know I feel like an old lady in church is like tapping one foot and trying to keep the other foot from running somewhere. Because one reason I wanted you to come on is because of all these conversations that we have privately in the many times you a lot of people, I, I, I run my own platform, so I ain't scared of Sunday Best. One reason why, and I'm not attacking Sunday Best, but I'm, I'm just saying one reason why people say, Yolanda, why are we doing Sunday Best? Why are you doing? And there was a conversation you had with me sitting in the parking lot uh, of a church. And I kept saying the pressure, the pressure people want me to do, people want me to do. And the conversation you had with me that day I have never forgotten the things you shared with me privately, um, the things that people didn't know that, you, you know, there, there's always good, bad, and indifferent. But the things you said tonight, the things you shared with me then, and it, it really, again, goes back to everything you everything you said. I, there's no way to piggyback on it because everything you said was amazing, but it goes back to knowing your purpose, knowing what you're supposed to do knowing what's for you and what's not for you, being sure of that, being confident of that. Today, I saw a, a question posed by uh, Bishop L. Spencer, and the, the the base of the question really was, can we be innovative in gospel music? It, will it thrive if we're innovative, which I do believe it will, but I believe most of the time when people fail to understand, again, that you've already said, I just want to further iterate, is creativity cost. Definitely. If you want to be a real creative, it is not going to always be light. People will not always agree. People will not always give you the green light. 
They will not always check off. They're not going to always agree for you. And therefore, I believe that most people want all of the fame, all of the lights. They want the red carpet, but they don't want the work. Yeah. <clears throat> you yeah, can man. really reality can't have one without the other. So it's all of these things people want, but they're not willing to do the work. And so if, wh whatever genre you're going to sing, right. you're definitely going to be in ministry. You're going to sing it people and you're going to sing about God. Then the requirement is prayer. The requirement is a humble heart. The requirement is humility. I remember I've often heard you talk about your gratitude is just too low. <laughs> yes. Your gratitude is too low. Pick pick it up, Saints. Pick it up. <laughs> yeah, when your gratitude is low, you can't really, you can't really receive what the Lord has for your life. And I'm talking outside of music. Listen, you can't receive relationships, you, you can't receive money, you can't receive harvest. You can't the real things. I remember when I first moved to Charlotte and I was in my apartment. I didn't have any furniture. I didn't have anything but a blow up mattress and my computer and my phone. And I remember talking on the phone to a pastor and he and I was like, I'm, I'm just, you know, which was totally kind of like out of my character. But I was so frustrated. And I was like, oh, my God, is a, a bed. I don't even have a. He said, are you serious? He said, where do you live? I live in, I live in Charlotte. You know where I live. He said, do you, do, you, do you have a roof? I said, yes. He said, so, okay. Okay, so you have somewhere to sleep. Do you have clothes? Yes. He said, you take that computer and you lay up on that bed and you do that work because you're being ungrateful. And God can't open anything for you because you're being ungrateful. I repented. I switch my mind within a matter of days to weeks. Things just start coming. My business started expanding all over again. What seemed short got longer. Yeah. So I just thank you so much for coming on tonight because I think people really needed to know that both sides need to be equal. Yeah. You can't be all wonderful and glamorous on stage and be a nasty, mean person. Or you can't be all nice and wonderful, but then not have the confidence. My friend says, you have to be confident. I heard Maurice Griffin say to me the other day, you have to be confident enough to try. And I believe most people lack that because the trying, <laughs> the trying even the trying even requires effort. Definitely. Definitely. When you go through yeah. a bad relationship, when you go through a, a bad circumstance, you have to at least be willing to try and get up out the bed the next day. Try and brush your teeth. Try and wash your face. But if you're not willing to do that, then you hold your, you hold God back. And uh, as big as he is and as great as he is and as, as big of a creator as he is, you hold him in a strength huh, from doing what he's supposed to do for your life because you're not even willing to try. Absolutely. That was always my, my frustration with people. At least try. At least try to, to, to try, try something different. At least try to put the song out. At least try to do something more than what you're doing because most of the time, I feel like most of the time what you're doing is not enough. If you had not written those songs that you went that you wrote 20, 15 years ago, there wouldn't have been a song for Leandria to, to pick from. So there we go. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's all good. You know, uh I just I I'm I'm satisfied now because I understand the price that I paid. You know, I don't have time to tell my testimony tonight. Um but just know that I have one and um I'm not supposed to be here. Um but you know purpose is why I'm still here. I'm full of it. You know, and uh, at the appointed time, he's going to do with it what he wants to do with it. And it's the same thing with you, you know. Um, and so I'm not really concerned about any of those things. You know, I don't hang up my hat on any of those accomplishments. I'm grateful for them. You know what I'm saying? But they don't define me. You know, I am who God says I am. And I'm going to be that at the end of the day. He's the only one that provides for me. He's the one that makes sure, you know, I got what I need. You know what I'm saying? He's the one that 
turned everything around. He's the one. Don't nobody else owe, it deserves the glory. They deserve the credit for what God has done. You know, and because I know that it was him, you know what I'm saying? I'm 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 confident in whatever it is he he I put my hands to knowing that the wind of God is behind me pushing me to do it, then those are the things that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna follow the wind of God, you know. And so you gotta and you gotta follow the wind of God for your own life. Okay, hear me when I tell you this. You need to follow the wind of God for your own life. If the wind of God is pushing you and moving you forward, go ahead. Don't resist the wind. Glory to God. That's what Pastor was talking about when Darwin was saying all heaven is backing you. It's the wind of God that's coming along. My pastor um, was telling me a story about a locust, about a bird. And was talking about how him and his wife, they were having a disagreement in front of me. They were talking about, well, I've seen... Um, I seen a you know locust the bird and I saw a locust fly. Pastor told his wife, "No, locust the bird that don't know how to fly. Locust cannot fly." She said, "I'm telling you, I saw with my own eyes. I saw this bird. I saw a locust fly." Say, "No, you ain't never seen no locust fly. They cannot fly. They do not have the ability to do it." Please hear me in the Holy Ghost tonight, okay? They do not have the ability to do it, okay? Uh, he, she, 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 he, she said, no, I saw, I don't care what you say. I, you ain't going to tell me what I saw. He says, no, what a locust does is they have the ability to sense when a strong wind is coming. Oh, Lord have mercy. And, when, and, and, what, and what a locust does is when they can sense when a strong wind is coming, at the appropriate time, they jump in the wind and the wind carries them from where they are over to the next place. And it makes them look like they have an ability that they don't have. Y'all not gonna help me tonight, but I'm telling you right now, some of y'all been wondering how in the world creatively am I gonna get from where I am to where God has shown me in my spirit? How am I gonna get from here to there? And I want you to know that you need to get the discernment to know when to jump. Because when the strong, when the next time a wind blows by the spirit of God in your life, the next time he releases a wind, don't you sit there and let the wind pass you by. You better get enough faith to try. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk back. I'm trying to, you were just talking about trying and doing whatever. You have to have the ability to be able to jump in the wind and the wind of God. When you have enough faith to jump in the wind, it's going to literally carry you from where you are into the manifestation of what God has promised for your life. What do I mean by the word manifestation? I mean where it becomes easily perceived by the human eye. That's what I mean about manifestation. I mean it, that the Mercedes is no longer in your spirit. It's in your driveway. It's manifestation. And, the, and, and it's the wind of God that gives you the ability to do what you cannot do on your own. It's not that you have, it's not that, thank you, Ray Tina, for the seed. I just see it popping up on my phone. I love you. Um, what, 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 but what, what it happens is you have to have the discernment to know when the wind is coming. When you sense the wind, you need to jump, have enough faith to jump in the wind and let the wind of God carry you. That's what. That's why it looks like supernaturally. Somebody can say, well, how in the world did you get from here to there? Or how in the world did you do this to that? How did you do that? How did, No, I, I had enough faith to jump in the wind. Glory to God. And that's what God's going to do for somebody on the line tonight. You, The next time God's getting ready to release, glory to God, for some of you, glory to God, even in the month of August, before even August gets out of here, God's going to give you the ability. He's going to, you're going to be able to sense it when it shows him. And I'm telling you right now, this next time, even if you fail the first time, if you jump this time, glory to God. I want to talk to every entrepreneur out there. Every If you jump, if you have enough faith to release your faith this time, the wind of God is getting ready to, to carry you from the place that you are in right now to the place that he has called you to. Manifestation. It's a, it's a beautiful place. Glory to his name. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to God. Somebody ought to take a minute right now and just praise him. Glory to God for manifesting. It's nigh you. It's literally coming upon you like a garment. Glory to God, you're going to be able to wear it with precision because I feel the spirit of the Lord, even for some of you tonight, he's going to, he said, I'm going to do a precision cut on you, a surgery, a surgery cut. God's going to cut you with such a precision. 
to get you ready, glory to God, to be able to be equipped, glory to God, with the ability to jump. He's going to literally thrust you back to, 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 to thrust you forward. He's going to pull you back to thrust you forward. Not just forward to be seen. No, that's not what I'm talking about tonight. Matter of fact, I ain't been talking about that at all tonight. I'm talking about you positioning your spirit, glory to God, to be a station and a channel and a vessel that God can use whenever he want to use it, however he want to use it. That's what it's all about. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. He's going to give you the ability to know when to jump and this time when you do it. Hallelujah. I want to I prophesy to every entrepreneur that stepped out on faith that to, to, to start your business. You walked away from what was comfortable and you're in an uncomfortable season right now. But the Holy Ghost said, don't be weary. Glory to God. Don't be weary in your well-doing. I have a plan for your life. I have a pro- I'm getting ready to show you who you are. Oh, Lord. I'm getting ready to show you why you're still here. Hallelujah. Ah, shy yoga. Some of y'all gonna change your surroundings. You got the wrong people talking in your ear. You got the wrong folks and you believed them. Some of y'all done believed the lies of the insecurity of people that you've given access to, to, to you that shouldn't have it. You better come out of that quick. You better come out of that really quickly. Or you're going to miss the next wind. Worrying about what somebody else's journey did. You don't know what God has in store for you. You don't know everything. He sometimes he'll he'll he don't he'll do like Abraham. He'll just say go. He'll just say go with no directional details. He'll just say go. Faith is believing that something is so when it is not so in order that it may be so. That's my ghetto definition. It's the mindset of God being manifested in your life. It's the, God has a box of stuff that he wants to accomplish in your life. How you get it out of your life is it comes out of your life by faith, you pull it out of the box to manifest in your life. Some of us got so much stuff, our box is full of stuff that we don't even access to try to bring manifestation to those things because we're so busy looking at what everybody's doing. I don't want none of what God has for you, but I do want all that he has for me. I want all of it. None of yours, all of mine. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's the precision mindset of God manifested with no restrictions. His heart, his will, his mind, his flow. Come on, creativity is about flow. It's not a one-time event. If you're looking at it like that, you missed it. It's a life, it's a way of living. It's a flow of God. It's a God consciousness, not just about one thing, but about everything. And at the appointed time, the right things flow out of you the way it should. You need to make a decision. Can I pray for these people so we can go? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now. I pray right now that you will stir up, oh my God, whatever you have left. Because some of y'all, I call you out of your pity party tonight. Now, in the name of Jesus, I call you out of your victim mentality. I call you out of your slumbering state. Wake up, you slugger. 
Glory to God. Don't you know, glory to God, that the harvest is ripe. Glory to God, but the laborers are few. Wake up, create, create, creative laborers. Come to the vineyard. God is called. He has need of us. And Father, we accept your call tonight. You've done something to our perspective. We've seen things differently than what we saw before. You're doing something on the inside of us. You're giving us an ability that we're getting ready to thrive on the other side of this crisis. We're getting ready to see your hand and a move of your spirit like we've never desired. I thank you right now for pulling the scales off of our eyes so that we can only see what you see. Mm. We can only we can only see what you see, Father. We only accept, hallelujah, what your word is, your plan, your thoughts toward us. Every visionary on this line, every creative force, not only the entrepreneurs, but everybody with a ministry, everybody with a calling, everybody walking with a purpose, everybody that's looking for direction. Glory to God. God said, it's coming now upon you now as you seek my face. Glory to God. Thy face, O God, will I seek. I'm seeking you. After you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. God, you said everything else will be added unto us. I thank you, Lord God, for adding. Oh, my God. Uh, and multiplying. Uh, Increase. For those people that are ready, for those people, glory to God, that have, that, that have, that have dug out, glory to God, all of those things that were uh, uh, weights unnecessarily on the inside of us. I bless you right now that you're getting ready to cause right now in the name of Jesus, the spirit of collaboration. You're getting ready to loose divine connection. You're getting ready to put us in contact with the provision. And I thank you that more than enough influence oh more than enough money more than enough finance more than enough i pray god that the seed that you give to the sore that shall never run out will come upon everybody under the sound of my voice that after tonight there'll be no more excuses for why they'll be stuck doing nothing oh this is not the season to do nothing. I come down Bahia. For I can hear the spirit of the Lord say that a seed of nothing will produce a season of nothing. This is the time to plant. You ain't seen the fullness like you get ready to see now on the other side of this next obedience. Don't be weary. Father, it's my prayer. Don't be weary. Don't let us be weary, Father, to believe the lie of the enemy. But that we'll be awakened to a realm of endless possibilities. Glory to God, a level of freedom that we don't even know. We've never even known before this level of freedom. Ah, so cold. I thank you right now for pruning, cutting away, getting rid of the excess that we don't need, the leeches, the parasites the people that are sucking the very life out of us that we laughing with on a day-to-day -day basis. No more. Thank you for a clear vision for everybody under the sound of my voice that they'll know with increasing clarity what's next. That there'll be no questions. And that they'll move with the fire of the Holy Ghost, the fire of the anointing. In Jesus' name, amen. That's shy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let us see your goodness in our lives in real time. Yes, God. <laughs> in real time. <laughs> I like that. Glory to God. Let it, It's happening right now. It's happening right now. Hallelujah. And even you, uh, Yolanda, I prophesy that as the Lord do surgery on your heart tonight, he do surgery on your mind, that he does something with your perception 
that you see yourself in the way that he sees you and only that from this day forward and that you walk with a boldness and with a confidence to be who you already are. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Faith to manifest in the fullness of who he called you to be without apology. Oh my. You've had enough days in that he pronounces a benediction on the state of mind that you've been in for the last year and a half. It can be no more. That's too much inside of you. That's too much inside of you for you to be stuck tripping over dumb stuff that don't even matter. The purpose of God is greater than your concerns. It's greater than your questions. It's greater than your inadequacies. In Jesus' name. If there's any low self-esteem in there, I'll call you out. Yeah, sure. You can't you can't survive at this level. We suffocate you in the Holy Ghost. This Shandala If there be any security, insecurity there. If there be uh, whatever, you're fearfully and wonderfully and beautifully made. And everything that he put on the inside of you, he says, I'm going to exalt you in my due time. There is a due season coming with your name on it. And the only person that have held you back is you. Oh, my God. Glory to God. There have been other imps and other people that have tried to speak on the sidelines. But if you wouldn't have believed it, it wouldn't have had no effect. I uprooted in Jesus name. There's no place for it in your next season. Let it go. Without apology. Without explanation. Even without second thought. In the name of Jesus. You are enough. You are more than good enough and qualified to walk in the resurrection of your purpose. Whom he called, he qualified. Glory to God. Wow. Creatives, be encouraged tonight. Every creative on here. I love you. God loves you. I'm looking forward to seeing the fruit of the manifestation of everything that he put on the inside of all of you. And uh, thank you for this opportunity to share with you guys. Well, <laughs> what do you say after that? Thank you so much, Cedric, for sharing um, your heart, sharing uh, what God has given you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for uh, speaking over my life for the 88 time. I love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. You know I love you. I love you. Too, man. And, and, and let me say this last thing. I, I really believe that something everybody can, uh, you know, see my post or whatever. One thing I've been posting. Um, so, Darwin Hawk. <laughs> oh my goodness rest upon the narrow road he's placed you on it can I say one thing about that Yolanda he says not performance yes. that's for all of us do you know that in the scripture y'all look it up when, de when the devil told Jesus, um, if you be the son of God, then turn these 
stones in the bread or whatever the case may be. He was asking him to perform. Jesus said, no, that's not my season to do. In other words, I'm not getting ready to perform for you. <laughs> and sometimes when you are creative and you're up singing and somebody walk in the room that you feel like is more anointed than you, it's easy for you to come out of purpose and go into performance. Mm -hmm. But just like Jesus did, he like he told Satan, I ain't got to turn nothing into nothing to prove who I am. I don't have to perform for you. And that's what I, and I say to everybody on the line tonight, resist the urge to perform just like Jesus did. Wow. Whew. Holy Ghost. Okay. I have to tell this story that no one I've never talked about publicly ever until today. Uh, some friends of mine, their mother passed and I had just been in Atlanta and I turned back around a couple days later to be with them to bury their mother. I was never scheduled to sing at the funeral and I was handed the mic. <laughs> and I remember Darwin Hobbs was sitting in the audience. And I remember having this moment to perform and I had to turn it off. Later that night, God, later that night, he was at an event that April Love used to put on every so often or whatever have you. And I remember he was sitting in front of me. I had never in my life been in the man's presence. Had always wanted to. And I remember he turned around and he said, wow, you were the young lady singing today. I said, yes, sir. He said, I really enjoyed you. Keep doing what you're doing. It was something, this has been quite a long time ago. The, the other person that was there at the time said, oh no, she belongs to me. She goes to my church. <laughs> Never will forget that. And I remember feeling defeated because I felt like they took my moment and this was supposed to be this moment and you took it. it. Didn't belong to you, not yours. And I carried that for a very long time because I always felt like people, everything Cedric, Cedric is somebody, I, I don't question anything that comes out of his mouth. And he is exactly right. For years, I have apologized. I just got to the place where I said, I'm not doing it no more. I'm not, I'm not going to apologize for loving people. I'm not going to apologize for the places God has taken me. I'm not going to apologize for the way my body structure is made. I'm not going to apologize another day for liking what I like or doing the things I do or who he's connected with. But most of the time... I, I never was even looking to have those connections. That was just something he did. But Darwin Hobbs, I just want to tell you what you just said ignited, further ignited in me what Cedric had already spoken. And you don't know, you just really freed me because I carried that thing for years. Oh my God. Feeling like somebody stole something from me. But Ooh. what God has song is the truth. What God has is always for you. And there is nothing that no one can do to take it from you. So I know we've been here much longer than we normally are. Someone asked the question, will this be available? They can. I'm going to keep it up. I'm not taking it down. Um, it'll be up on YouTube by tomorrow. Um, 
I just want to thank you for being here. I, I really hope that something was spoken to. <laughs> and tonight, yes, sir, God has eternally joined us. Yes, sir. I received that. I want to um, thank you for coming on and being a part and sharing your time or sitting on your couch or uh, laying in the bed, looking at your phone, however you view this live tonight. Thank you so much. I don't do this to be seen. I don't do it to be heard. I don't, I don't do it for any of those purposes. I do it because I know what it's like to be a creative because I am one. Uh, I know what it's like to choose between having to do one thing and having to do something else. So I only do it because I want to encourage creatives to keep going. I do it because I want to push people into their purpose. I want to do for somebody what Cedric has done for me for years. It is because of him that I was able to walk the streets of Paris. And I will forever ever as long as I am breathing I will forever be grateful to him he literally has treated me he has always done everything he said I don't if he called me tomorrow and said be at the airport I'm not probably going to even ask where we're going because I trust him just that much there are not a lot of people walking around the earth like that but I trust him with my entire life He's never crossed that. He's just never done it. He's a phenomenal individual. So two things I'm going to say is that if there's any seed you have, I heard Mickey, Pastor King talk about something tonight. She said, you don't, you don't, man, she just clarified about sowing. You sow because it's helped create a bridge in your life. You sow because it's helped you get to the next place. That's why you sow. So something, I never talk about money here. Outside of you making money, I never have asked people to sow. But if you were blessed in any capacity at all, you should sow into his life tonight because this has helped you connect you to your next place. And then it just keeps going from there if you're open to it. So please um, do whatever, you know, every, everything counts. Every, everything counts. He didn't ask me to do that. That wasn't in his, you know, requirement or request or anything of that nature. Um, we're friends. We're black like brothers and sisters, and that's what we'll be until Jesus says something else. So, whatever you can, please do that. Secondly, Cedric, his his cash app is on the screen. Cedric, I just want to thank you. Um, you share a lot of bit, of, a lot of your heart. Um, there's so much you can out, you know, give and. Outpour, but if you want to connect with Cedric, you can connect with him right here on Facebook. Um, however, he prefers to be connected, he'll let you know that. Um, he is a wealth of knowledge, uh, spiritually, practically, <laughs> industry. He is a wealth of knowledge that I feel like everybody should have. And so, um, who who you choose to surround yourself says a lot of bit a lot about your life. And I believe it is very, very important to connect yourself with the right village. The right village will either make or break you, period. So thank you so much, Cedric. You're welcome. Love you guys. Love you so much. Thank you. Uh, so thank you for everybody who came in. Again, uh, Again, if you don't know, everybody should know who Darwin Hobbs is. <laughs> but if you don't know who Darwin Hobbs is, you need to make your way to iTunes or Google Play whatever it is that you, um, however you get music and you need to get this man's music. It is, it is phenomenal. Uh, Cedric, of course, has music. We didn't talk really a lot about the brothers, but he has a brand new, first of all, any music that he has out is phenomenal. Um, the content, the structure, the musicality, it's all amazing. And then he has uh, a newer uh, found love, found group called the Cedric and the Brothers. And let me tell you something. I don't ask exactly how to know. Cedric's the type of individual, I'm gonna say this last and I'm done. He is a type, there are only a couple places like this. Cedric Shannon Reeves, Michael Lampkin, and Sam Franklin. I go prepare to lay on the floor with a blanket. I, I just, cause I never know what I'm gonna encounter. And um, 
the brothers are a unique blend of men and these voices are something that I <laughs> just you have to experience it for yourself. The record is amazing, but you have to literally hear them in person to really get the load of what they do. So um totally honored. Uh please, please, please be sure to sow into his ministry. And so we're done. That's it. Um, thank you so much again, Cedric. And uh, love you. Love you too. I think he's getting ready to work. So thank you so much uh, for coming on. Be sure that you watch Sunday Best next week. Um, please be sure that you vote. It's just bet.com forward slash Sunday Best Vote, V O T E. And uh, again, if you want to hit me up about Marketing Mondays, um, it's, a, it's a really amazing creative who does Marketing Mondays and he'll promote anything that you're doing. Uh, it can be your prayer call. It can be your book. It can be your music. It can be anything. Um, and the cost is just $2. So have a wonderful night. Uh, this will stay up. I won't take it down. Thank you so much for coming in. And until then, talk to you.